Hey, welcome back. Yet another video. This has been a week of just video after video after video, day after day after day, man. Can you dig it? Do you, can, do, do you love it? I hope you do, because I love it. Anyways, um, HPI Ignition Project. We've gotten off to a great start uh, with donations, and we just were $75 away. $75 away, folks. Maybe even closer. I don't know by the time I post this video, but we'll see. So just trying to raise $125 for the HPI Ignition Project. So I wanted to give you guys something. I wanted to, to pay, you know, put something out there so you just, you know, you don't feel like you're just giving away money. I, I want to give you, I don't know, how, how many do we got here? How many we got going on? Let me take a look. I've got 32 QT50 virtually free tips. Number one. Um, you get a QT50, one of the first things you want to do is lube up those cables. How do I know? Because when I got my first QT50, which is sitting right up here on the workbench, this is my very first one. I've had like eight or nine of these damn things, so, uh, but I've only kept the first one. And uh, anyhow, when I first got it, the throttle cable broke on me within like a couple days. Boy, did that suck. So what I should have done, and what you should do with your QT50, if you don't get new cables, and even if you do get new cables, I was wondering about this myself recently, should you lube the new cables? I mean, do they come lubed or not? I'm not sure. But you definitely want to lube the old cables. Now you can go out and get a cable luber tool for like 10 or 15 bucks, or you can do this for virtually free. I've got, I think this is a throttle cable. Uh, I've got all kinds of cables laying about, so sometimes I'm not exactly sure you know what they go to at first glance. Um, if you just take some duct tape and make a funnel, and if you want, if you're worried about it leaking, you can get like a zip tie and zip tie the base of the duct tape against the cable end, and then you want to take some... No! You don't want to use WD-40 because that's just going to clean out whatever lube is in there. But you can get some of this WD-40 specialist stuff. Here's gel lubricant. That'll work well. Or then we've got some uh, water-resistant silicone lubricant. I think that would work well as too. And what you want to do is you don't even have to take your cable off the bike either. I'm just, I, I got a free cable and it's easier to demonstrate this way. Uh, take your lubricant, fill up your little duct tape funnel, and let it let it sit for like 15 or 20 minutes and put it in a position where it doesn't fall over and it'll stay up and uh, you might have to secure it or something to the bike to keep it in this position and then let it drain through the cable it might take 15 20 minutes 30 minutes come back do it again wait come back do it again wait come back do it again wait until basically uh, you'll see the lubricant leaking out the other end of the cable and that'll lube up your cables I think this this gel lubricant might work the best because uh, it's a little more viscous than, than the other stuff. So it's going to stain your cable better. Heck, you could probably even use uh, two-stroke oil or four-stroke oil. I, I don't know. You know that Oil might work pretty well uh, as well. So first tip down. Moving on to number two. Okay, you can kind of see it here. See that spring? That is not a stock rear brake spring. That is I went to the hardware store and got this for like I don't know a buck 29 or something like that you know give or take 20 cents who knows it could have been a buck 49 it could have been a, a, a dollar nine I don't know but anyways it's virtually free and it's basically a thicker gauge spring than what comes on the QT50 and why is that great well when you push in the brake it's gonna snap back real easy because this higher gauge spring is a higher tension it's going to push it back and a lot of times the original spring on your QT50 is almost 40 years old and who knows how many 
how many times people have you know grabbed on the brakes it's probably weakened it's not as strong anymore you can go to the hardware store and replace it for about a buck twenty nine you might have to cut this to size but uh, you won't have to worry about you know your your brake lever cam not returning because the spring is so lousy so for a buck twenty nine uh, and just cut it to size and that'll work great all right moving right along I guess we can get the cable out of the way we don't need that here anymore um, is your headlight burned out well you can I guess you can still get the uh, stock headlight at probably Babbitt's online or some other uh, Yamaha parts OEM dealer but there's a better way and you can see in there that is an H4 6 volt headlight and what I did was I took a Dremel and uh, I basically very carefully cut out the old headlight as best I could then I took this new H4 bulb just look for H4 6 volt headlight on eBay they're like you can get a pack of two for twelve bucks free shipping and uh, you might be able to tell I just took some JB weld uh, and JB welded this on and the uh, the stock Yamaha headlight plug just plugs right onto this so you, I, you don't even have to order a two pack you can get a uh, get them in single packs or whatever and as you can see on here the stock headlight is 6 volts 2020 and I think this is 6 volt 3535 so you're getting a little powerful, more powerful headlight, and you're not paying 40, 50 bucks for an OEM stock headlight. See, the deal is with the uh, the stock bulb is it's a sealed bulb, so you can't just if the bulb burns out, you can't just replace the bulb. You got to replace the whole headlight. Well, this way you can just replace the bulb with one of these and a uh, little JB weld you know you're looking at maybe uh, 10 bucks total so not free not virtually free but not much money at all where are we we are uh, oh, we're just on tip four tip four if you're running the oil injector replace the crusty hard brittle oil line with clear transparent line and guess what this is folks this is just weed eater fuel line it fits perfectly and uh, there's those little caps when you take off the old line there should be caps on each end and you can just take those caps and they'll hold and put this over the new line and they'll hold the new line on uh, just like they do the old line but the great thing about the clear oil injection line is you can just look down while you're riding the bike and at a glance especially if you're using you know two-stroke oil is usually blue so it's easy to see in this at a glance you can always tell you're getting oil to the carburetor you know just look down half a second yep everything looks good and when you put the new line on you want to run pre-mix in your gas tank until oil gets all the way to the carb you know goes through the entire line all the way to the carb so clear oil line go to a mower store you can find it on eBay or Amazon too but go to your local mower store and they have this just ask for weed dealer fuel line it works perfectly if, if you have any doubts just take your old line with you and they'll match it right up and you can obviously see no pun intended the benefits of clear oil line and I guess you might as well get clear fuel line why get well, at least somewhat transparent fuel line why get clear fuel line well you got a 40 year old bike you got a 40 year old gas tank you've got maybe a 40 year old petcock I don't know but anyways uh, one of the common problems with the Yamaha hopper is uh, fuel flow you know and you can always with clear fuel line and this is 3 16th inch fuel line you can always uh, just look at it you have to look a little closely but you're going to be able to see if you're getting gas to the carburetor and you can rule out immediately whether it's a fuel delivery issue or not with your bike clear fuel line get this on eBay it's 3 16 inch fuel line um, 
and uh, just type in 3 16th inch, I can't even say it, 3 16th inch fuel line, and you'll find it on eBay, and you can get it by the foot. It's on Treatland as well, and the great thing about this is at a glance, you can always tell if you're getting fuel, and you can rule out a fuel delivery problem if you're having problems with your Yamaha hopper. Okay, tip number six. You can also use quarter inch fuel line. Now, I think 3 16th inch fuel line works better. I got in a discussion with somebody over this. No, no, it, it's, a, you got a, it's a quarter inch line. What are you talking about? You're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. The quarter inch line does not fit well on the stock carburetor. You've got to use hose clamps with it. And I think you've got to use hose clamps at the other end with the petcock. The 3 16th inch fuel line, you don't have to use hose clamps or uh, at the carburetor or the petcock, it'll, it'll just slip right on. Usually it's a little too tight, so what you want to do is just like boil some water and then soak this uh, each end in, in the boiling, well, the water that you've taken off, uh, off the uh, burner anyways, that was boiling, and soak it for a couple minutes, a few minutes, and it'll loosen right up, and you can slide it over the carburetor and slide it over the petcock, no problem, and then when it cools, it'll actually contract and cinch on there tighter. If you're still worried, you can just take a zip tie and zip it, zip tie it on real well. And uh, the same trick works for getting it over the fuel filter. Uh, your rims are probably crusty, rusty. You want to clean them up, get some double zero steel wool. Yep, grade double zero. Uh, you can even get it finer than that, but I think you don't want to get it any coarser any coarser and it will you can get it in zero one two and three and maybe more I don't know uh, but I think zero and above will actually scratch double zero uh, will not scratch and it'll clean up the rims and spokes real nice uh, you can also use uh, uh, WD-40 works pretty good on the rims as well and then I think I've got I don't have it handy but a uh, toothbrush and some chrome Chrome polish uh, will work well also in terms of cleaning up the rims. I have replaced just about every bolt on this thing with uh, Allen head bolts because uh, those JIS screws over time, over you know decades, I think, I hope, got soft. I hope they weren't soft from you know when they were first installed, but they seem to get soft and they strip easily and. Um, usually you have to have like a, an impact driver to get them out but if you go on a moped, ar moped army there's a QT50 bolt chart and it tells you the sizes of almost every bolt on the bike and you can go to boltdepot.com and order these allen head bolts and I've got them on the other side as well and uh, you can replace all the uh, GIS screws that have softened over time and strip out real easy with these Allen heads and then when you need to get in here and do anything uh, you're not fighting uh, those old screws instead the Allen head bolts come right off. Unhappy with your gas cap on your uh, stock Yamaha hopper? Well you can go on eBay and order a CT70 gas cap and it'll come with a well, this one this one is kind of old, but this is a CT70 gas cap. It will come with a new fuel gasket for $12.98 shipped on eBay. You might find it cheaper even elsewhere. CT70 gas cap works perfectly on a QT50. You want new tires on your QT50? These are actually the IRC NC77 tires, but if you want cheap tires, go to bikebandit.com. Occasionally, well, fairly often they have in stock Kenda 14 inch tires 2.25 inches wide for $15 and change each so for $31 you can get a new set of tires uh, bikebandit.com you might be able to find them elsewhere but they're dirt cheap and they're decent tires they are difficult to mount uh, the IRC NC77's are easier to mount and they're wider tires but if you just want to replace your old dry rotted, cracking, rip tires for cheap. Uh, $31, of course shipping's extra, unless you order, I forget, $100 of stuff, you get free shipping. But uh, bikebandit.com, Kenda, 
2.25 inch by 14 inch tires will work on the QT50. Now, um, if you do get the IRC tires or even the Kenda, you might find that they're rubbing against the uh, fender stays. What you can do, go to your local bike store, maybe one that's been in business for decades, and bring your fender stays with you, take them off the bike. And uh, the QT50 fender stays have that goofy indentation right here and here on each side, and that's where the tires rub. Uh, they have them dig around in their, in their um, parts bin, and you can usually find uh, bike fenders that'll work and don't have that goofy kink in them where the tires rub and you can get a lot wider tire on uh, without them and I think also uh, uh, see how these these mount uh, on the inside of the fender uh, I think the Honda Express ones might work and they actually mount outside the fender and uh, give you a lot more space as well so the other thing you can do is you, you can take the stock QT50 uh, fender stays and dremel them uh, on the under, underside right here and here where they normally rub against the tire and uh, widen them out a little bit. You're not gonna you're gonna, not gonna make them weak. You're just taking off a little bit of material and you could probably do it with a file as well if you don't have a dremel and get these new tires to fit. Okay, you got your new to you QT50 and you got it running and you take it out for a ride and you get up to 20, 22, 24, 25, 26 maybe and it starts bogging on you like crazy four stroking. What do you do? Well, here we've got the stock carb for the QT, uh, just kidding. Uh, but if you do have the stock carb for the QT50, you need to open it up, look at the main jet. It's probably a 70 main jet. You need to order from treatland.com a 67.5 main jet. And that should solve your four stroking issue. Next tip you can get the stock Yamaha Makuni jets from Treatland, or you can go in the search box at Treatland, type in SHA jets uh, for the Delordo SHA carb and those jets work perfectly in the QT50 plus they come in increments of one instead of two and a half so you can get a 66, 67, 68, 69, 65 whatever you want and put that in your QT50 carb. Alright while I'm at the carb here we've got our stock QT50 intake wrong actually let me get one Sorry about that. Here we go. Here we got our stock Wimpy QT50 intake. <laughs> this is like a little toy, right? Whoops. It's like a little snail or something, man. Go crawl back under your rock, man. This thing sucks. Anyways, um, you can get on eBay and search for a YT60 intake. And it's kind of wimpy too, but it's a little bit longer. You know, about another inch or so, maybe a couple inches longer. And it, it angles up as it gets longer. Uh, and it'll fit right on perfectly. I know because I've done it. Anyways, what that allows you to do is kind of like this. It it uh, shoots it out farther so you can stick a bigger carb on there. And what carb are you going to put on there? You're going to put on a PW80 carb, which is just a bigger version of the Yamaha QT50 carb. And it fits right on that YD60 intake. But the intake brings it out far enough so that it, you know, you try to put it on a stock intake and the frame gets in the way because the carb's so big. And you can get a PW80 carb on eBay for, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks. So you want a bigger carb? Get the YT60 intake. I got an intake off eBay for like less than 10 bucks shipped. It was sweet. I did it. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Okay, if, you, if you've gone the premix route, you don't have any use for your oil tank. Well, yes, you do. You can use it as a reserve tank. Just get a fuel Y or a fuel T. I don't know if you can see it here, but if you go to uh, eBay and type in Fuel Y or Fuel T, it, it basically uh, is a way of uh, putting two fuel lines into one. So I've got a fuel line going here, and then I've got a fuel line coming out the oil tank. You might not be able to see it. 
uh, going here, and they go into one, then to the filter, then to the carb. And uh, I've also got, you can't see it, but it's a Motion Pro fuel brass fuel shutoff. Don't get those crappy uh, Briggs lawnmower fuel plastic shutoff things. Those things suck. They always leak av over, you know, after, you know, a month or two. Uh, the, the red and black ones, you know what I'm talking about. Those are a waste of money. Get a brass Motion Pro fuel shutoff Amazon. It's like $9.99 shipped. Uh, and, and never look back. So you got a fuel shut off underneath the oil tank and you've got your petcock fuel shut off. So you run out of gas here. Of course you got the reserve as well on the, on this, but you burn through all or just run it on reserve. You burn through all this, then turn this one on and you've got the uh, you know quarter gallon or whatever, a little less than a quarter gallon of gas. It's something, you know, it's a reserve. It's more than the, the reserve in the gas tank. Uh, you've got that going on here, and then just leave your uh, uh, your oil level thing put in, but just, uh, uh, let's see here, see it, where are we, yeah, see, just unplug it, just un if you're worried about the electrical going into the gas, just unplug it, and you'll have, uh, so you got 0 .6, 0 .2, you almost have a gallon tank, you got a 0 .8 gallon tank if you make use of both of those things, and then while we're at it, um, if you got a slightly rusty gas tank, of course you've got a really rusty gas tank, you should clean it out, but if you, if you just got a slightly rusty gas tank, of course you should run a fuel filter, but these Fram fuel filters really, you know, don't filter all that much out. What you need to get is a Kohler 15 micron fuel filter. Some rust will still get through it, but a lot less than this. And it's like this huge uh, fuel filter for this Kohler lawnmower, it's like 10 bucks but it filters down to 15 microns. It's almost like you can have another reserve gas tank because the thing is like this big. It's huge. It's amazing. But uh, if you got problems with rust and uh, you don't want rust going into your carburetor, at least very little rust going into your carburetor, get one of those. Okay, you need a new battery for your QT50. You can go out and get the lead acid battery that, that can leak all over your frame and, and mess up the paint and stuff like that. Or you can go out and get one of these deer feeder batteries. You know, you can mount it in any position, upside down, sideways, diagonally. I don't care what, it doesn't leak. It's awesome. And it'll work great. Uh, and it's only like eight or nine bucks, free shipping, right? Or shipping built in the price. And it fits perfectly. It should fit. Have I put this in the, I haven't put this in the QT50 yet, but I think, I think this will fit in the battery box, no problem. Nine, you go to Walmart, they got them at Walmart too, or Meyer, who knows. I ordered mine online. I got like a five pack of these things, and it ended up costing me like, you know, 99 cents a battery. It was amazing. eBay has them. Because I got so many of these damn bikes, you know, I need batteries. So, and I want one that doesn't leak. You, you might have to adapt your connections, but get a soldering iron, learn how to solder, get some, you know, get some wire connectors and stuff. It's a good, a good thing to know. You got to know how to solder if you own one of these things. So deer feeder battery, eight or nine bucks. Replace the stock battery. Never leak again. Never worry about messing up your paint or whatever the thing's leaking on. This is the way to go. Trust me. I got it. It was good. I had fun. It was a great time. Hey, I found a stock carburetor. Um, you got a QT50, you need an air filter or you don't like the goofy stock air box because it doesn't connect up right. You know, those things, after 40 years, they're never the same, and somebody's drilled holes in it, or the tabs have broken off, and it won't stay on, and, you know, whatever. Um, of course, uh, oh, what the hell is this thing called? I forget what this air filter is called, but it's not the, even the one I want. But if you're looking for a new air filter for the stock carb, you need one with a 28 millimeter opening, uh, inner diameter opening, and, uh, go for the cone mesh filter. Uh, if you're willing to wait and order it from China, they're like six bucks each, or maybe they're on Amazon for six bucks e each. But uh, get the cone mesh air filter, 28 millimeter di inner diameter is what you need. And I, I can't I can't remember the name of this one. This one works good too, but uh, the the cone one is much cheaper. This is like I don't know, fifteen dollars or something like that. Now here's one I hadn't even planned on. And this fuel drain hose, uh, that weed or fuel line will work for, for this too. See how this is, this, I think this is original. This is like hardened up and, 
you know, just get rid of it. Pull it off, throw it away. It's worthless. You know, it won't even stay on. Get uh, some weed eater fuel line uh, for a drain hose. Make it longer, and uh, you can just cinch it on with uh, uh, zip tie. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, yeah, another tip. So you're not using the oil injection anymore, and you want to cap that off. You want to cap where the oil injection went on. These are called uh, vacuum uh, carburetor vacuum caps or intake manifold vacuum caps. Look it up on eBay. You can get like a, a pack of these in different sizes. They come in handy not only for the Yamaha Hopper but for the Honda bikes and stuff like that as well. You want to cap stuff off, just get these things. They're like, I don't know, little condoms for the, you know, the, the, the piping and stuff like that. Uh, you can get a, a set of them for seven bucks on eBay. Free shipping. Okay, you got rid of the oil in, oil injector. Yeah, you can take out two screws and just uh, just pull the oil pump out. What are you going to do? You're going to order the thirty dollar oil block off plate plus shipping from wherever? No, you can go out uh, to the hardware store or automotive parts store and get what's called a freeze plug or an automotive expansion plug. I forget. Uh, it's like an what does this one say? I forget if I got this one for the QT50 or the Honda Express. They're different sizes, but it's right around like an, an inch. Maybe it's a 7 8 to an inch in diameter. Um, I'd have to double check, but uh, just measure the inner diameter or measure your oil pump or measure the inner diameter of the, um, the spot where the oil pump goes in. Get one of these freeze plugs, pop it all the way down, and then you just tighten it. And as you tighten it, it expands out and gets super tight and it won't come out and you can if, if you're really worried about it I guess you could put some sort of uh, maybe Yama bond on this to you know seal up any any crevices but I've never had a problem on the QT50 with these so this is like five bucks your local hardware store alright before I move on to the statter one more thing about the tires uh, uh, the wider tires are, are also taller tires and that's the IRC uh, NR77 tires. Uh, those, if you're going to, your first upgrade on any of these bikes, especially if it's got original tires, is to replace the tires. And the taller, wider tires will give you a huge difference in ride quality. Uh, probably traction, ride quality, suspension, braking, all those things. Uh, now, they'll be a little heavier than the stock tires, but they're worth it. The ride is completely different, especially if your, your stock tires are worn out, dry rotted, bare, whatever. These will be a huge difference. Then on to the statter. Okay, one of the biggest problems with the QT50 is the uh, charge coil goes bad. Your spark gets weaker and weaker until you no longer have any spark. Go to Amazon.com, order a PW50 statter, pull off the PW50 charge coil, you flip it over, put it on the uh, QT50 statter, splice the wires together, and do the solder solder connection over here. I've got a video on it. Uh, you can get a PW50 statter on Amazon for like 15 to 17 bucks. It's worth it. Your spark will be much better. This is also really important if you put a bigger top end on. You need a stronger spark. This is one way of getting it. Okay. Here's the PW50 rear differential. Underneath it is a, a, a ring gear and then there's a pinion gear over here. You want to ever modify your QT50 to go fast, well you need to change the gearing because the stock gearing, it'll just rev to the moon and won't go very fast. So, get the PW50 ring and pinion gears and replace these. Oh, but that's not free. That's not even virtually free, man. That's going to cost me all kinds of money. Tell you what, if you need them replaced, three bolts here, uh, axle nut, remove the brake cable, the fender, the shock, pull this off, send it to me. I usually have PW50 gears. I'll, I'll trade you the PW50 gears for the QT50 gears. I'll install it, send it back to you, slap it back on the bike. You, you, you burn up the roads. Life is good. It was good. I did it. I enjoyed it. Okay, I don't, I don't like talk, to talk about two-stroke oil because everybody, you know, it's like a religion, you know. Well, oil is the greatest, you know, it, it saved mankind. Well, uh, if you got a performance bike, you made performance modifications, you want one of the better oils. This is it right here, the Motul 2T800. 
this is the best stuff. Why is it good? I'll tell you why. Uh, not because, you know, I rode the bike and I think it's good. It's good because uh, it's got a high flash point and it's high viscosity oil. High flash point means, uh, I think it's like 420, 430, maybe 450, I forget what it is. But anyhow, if you got all these performance modifications, your engine's going to run a lot hotter. Um, if you got crappy two-stroke oil in there, it's going to burn off at around 370 degrees. And, you know, you're going to be above 370 most of the time you're riding the bike. So you're just burning off the oil because the flash point is so low. low. Flash point is where the oil just burns and, and disappears, right? Um, if you got stuff that goes up to 450, I forget exactly what this is, but right around there, uh, it's not going to burn off at 370, 400, 420, 435, 440. It's going to still be there. So it'll protect your engine because it's still there. It's not burned off. It's not going out your exhaust pipe. So Motul 2T 800 motor oil. I also like the caster-based oils. I haven't had any in a while. The Blenzol is one of my favorites, but I haven't had any for a while. This stuff works great, in my opinion. How do you like the show and tell, man? Have you learned something yet? Have you learned something? Okay, here's something else. So let's 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 get a little closer. So we got stock QT50 cylinder head. We've got a Pook 40 millimeter cylinder head. This is also 40 for 40 millimeter piston here. Um, see how wimpy? See how crappy that is? Uh, you need a lot of aluminum. You need a lot a lot of head to cool off your engine. So guess what? The Pook cylinder head has the same mounting holes as the stock QT50 head. So you can take a Pook cylinder head and stick it on your QT50 bike, you know, your stock cylinder QT50 bike. And they, they, may even, they may even make a 44 millimeter one too for the 60cc kit. I know they make bigger ones as well. But look at that. It's huge. It's massive. That's going to cool, going to make it ice cold. Life is good. You want to keep your QT50 cold, get a Pook cylinder head with a lot of aluminum. Yeah, look, it was good. I liked it. I did it. While we're on the subject, stay away from the 60cc eBay kits. Why? Okay, what did they do? Uh, they, they made a bigger top end, but they kept the same size cylinder head. That's right, it's the same size. The only difference is they basically machined this out so it would accept a 44 millimeter piston. So from here to here is 40 millimeters in diameter. Well, they just made it two millimeters longer on each end to handle a bigger piston but they left the head the same size you got a bigger kit you need a bigger head for more cooling but why did they do that it was stupid it was ridiculous I bought several of them they all sucked it was worthless it was a waste of money and I bought them when they're $85 each now they're like $29 each you know you get what you pay for I, I burned through 340 bucks on these stupid kits they suck Suck, suck, suck. Don't get the eBay 60cc kits. I don't care what anybody else says. You want to raise compression? Take your cylinder head. Or if you just want to, you know, prevent air leaks, same thing. Take your cylinder head. Go to the hardware store. Get a scrap piece of glass for free. Get some sandpaper. Tape it on. Do figure eights with the cylinder head over the sandpaper. You can take a Sharpie and mark up the cylinder head and when all, when all the sharpie's gone you've got it flat or you can also tell just by looking at it you know some parts will be shinier than others if that's the case it's not done yet keep sanding start out with I don't know uh, maybe 120 grit 150 200 grit and then go and finish with like 400 600 grit paper on the other side do that it'll help prevent air leaks you can do it on your cylinder as well where the uh, cylinder head mates up with the cylinder. Do it on that end too. Make it nice and flat so you don't have any air leaks. You can you do that, you don't even have to run with a head gasket if you don't want to. Increase compression further. If you're still running a lead acid battery, go to the hardware store. Get some, get some clear hose to hook up to the battery, some drain hose. Run it all the way down your bike, down past the center stand. Uh, get some zip ties, tie it on. So when that battery leaks, it goes to the road. It doesn't go on your, you know, your frame or, or your exhaust or whatever and ruin it. 
this stuff is cheap. You buy it by the foot. I don't know. It's like 39 cents a foot. It's ridiculously cheap. There's no excuse. Go get it. This is great stuff. Get get a drain hose for your battery if you're going to run the crappy lead acid battery. It's that easy. I'm running out of room for show and tell. So you've got your new to you QT50 and the exhaust is all rud rusted and the uh, the exhaust shield is a mess. It's, it, it looks terrible. Terrible. Go out, take the exhaust off, get some sandpaper, sand it down, clean it off with soap and water, uh, hit it with some alcohol or something, let it dry, then go to the hardware store, get you some high heat paint. Not necessarily white, get black, silver, I don't know, whatever you want. This stuff is like good uh, 1200 degrees. Your exhaust isn't going to get that hot. It'll get close, but not that hot. Paint your exhaust, it'll look amazing. Paint your exhaust shield, it'll look amazing. Do them in different colors if you want, I don't care. This is the way to go, it's like six bucks a can, maybe cheaper. You know, it'll make your bike look amazing. You know, your friends will be like, wow, that's the coolest thing. Is that a new exhaust? No, it's a 40-year-old 40 40 year old exhaust, dude, but I painted it up. Look how good it looks now. Hey, back again with another tip. Remember um, the, the uh, intake, QT50 intake? Well, on the back of the intake, that's where the reeds go. Um, yeah, you want to get those boys and reeds. They're like 25 bucks. Oh, I want the boys and reeds. I want them. I want to stick them on my intake. They're going to be great for my engine. Everything's going to be great. But 25 bucks, that's bullshit. You know, I don't want to pay that kind of money. Go on eBay. There's a carbon fiber reed for $8.95 shipped. It's not the dual stage boys and reed, but it's a carbon fiber reed. Nine bucks. Do it. It was good. I got it. I enjoyed it. Okay, last tip from above. So you painted up your exhaust, but your seat looks like crap now. It looks even worse than it did. It's all ripped, foam's hanging out, blah, 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 man. Get rid of that thing. Go on eBay, $25 seat cover. Look at that. Look how good that looks, man. Let's pan around it. Oh, yeah. You know what I like. You know what you like. You like a new seat cover, too. Get yourself a staple gun. Start with the back first, then the, then the front, then the sides. Take your time. It'll look good. You'll like it. I do. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look how good that looks. That's like my... Nah, this wasn't my first attempt. This was my second or third. But my first attempt looked just as good. It's easy. I did it. You can do it. No problem. There you go. There you go, folks. Let me set you down. Let me set you down. Let me set you down. Hold on. Hold on. Let's finish it up. I think that's almost 35 tips. Somebody want to count and tell me? Tell me how many that is. I wanted to give you almost three dozen tips. No charge. So hey, we got a great start on the HPI Ignition Project. There's a donation button below. Hey, if you found several of these tips or all these tips or most of these tips or some of these tips or any of these tips helpful, consider giving me a donation for the HPI Ignition Kit. Well, I guess it's not a kit. System. Whatever you want to call it. So we can try it out together. We can install it. I'll show you how to do it. We can set it up. We can go out and ride. We can go back and tweak it. We can ride again. We can tweak it again. We can ride again until we're doing 60 miles an hour, man, and we have acceleration that's just, you know, motorcycle fast. That's right. Donation below. Send me anything. A dollar, two dollars, five dollars. If you found any of these tips helpful, and I'll have more. So, hey, thanks for watching. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you real soon.